Welcome to Motorhome Rehab Ranch. Do you have a GMC? Would you like to have one or just learn more about them? You're in the right place. And a special shout out to my ranch hands that help us support us by uh, paying for the videos and asking questions and working on their coach. If you'd like to be a member, a ranch hand, at the end of this video, we'll talk more about that. Uh, we're specifically devoted to the GMC Motorhome built from 1973 to 1978 only, okay? So let's get into something that may help you understand a little bit more about the GMC. What do you think? <clears throat> oh, you get the camera on? Hey, guys. It's Jim Bounds at Co-op Motor Works and Motorhome Rehab Ranch and Eleganza down here. Uh, Take care of me. And uh, we've been listening to a couple of your, uh, your comments, and you know, one's very true. Our set is really boring. <laughs> White wall. Um, so we're gonna be dressing it up here pretty soon. Got some uh, pictures and whatnot. You remember the Coca-Cola coach? We just, just delivered that one. This was a nice coach that we built. So anyway, <clears throat> We're not going to talk about that today. <clears throat> Got a, a, I did a video last week about ride height and how to use it. And my phone blew up. <laughs> Guys came on and said, well, I tried that and it went all over the road. And like, Hang on. Don't call about that. Let me explain. <clears throat> this is a 26 foot car. Okay. And uh, when the alignment is right, drive like a Lincoln. Two fingers on the wheel. But when it's wrong, it's a 26-foot bad car. Okay? So it's important to get the alignment right. It's important to get all the parts right. My dad was a grand bus driver. He never wanted to keep a car over 100,000 miles because he didn't have to deal with the front end at all, okay? Well, if you had a motorhome under $100,000, the front end's already, I mean, 100,000 miles, the front end's already dead. It's been sitting there, it rotted. So we have to deal with the front end, okay? So first step is you gotta make sure all the parts are good. And we did a video about um, how to check the parts. So you gotta have all the parts good, okay? Then, you have to set it at ride height. Remember the last video? Ride height, where it's called travel, where when you're on the highway, from the front to the back is about an inch and a half rake, like this. That's proper ride height, and that's where you want to set your alignment. Now, that may not be the way you drive it all the time, but that's where you want to set it, okay? <clears throat> so if all the parts are right, and the alignment and, and, and your ride height is set properly, your front wheels and all that, it's just a factor of an alignment and it'll be, it'll run great. All will, they will all run this way. It's not like, well, mine runs great and well, mine's terrible. Why is that? Well, it's just mine's a good one. No, they all will drive that way if you set it up right. And the alignment is not the black hole of Calcutta. Okay, it's not a black hole. Well, I got these specs, or I got this specs, or I put on this uh, this uh, sway bar thing, and man, that just solved it all. Well, that makes you want to go out and buy that. That's called throwing stuff against the wall to see if you can fix it. Go back to basics, and the basics are: are all the parts in good shape? Is it set up right, and is it aligned well? And if it is, it'll work. Okay. That one I can guarantee you. All right, so what is, so I can see it now. You're sitting here. Well, what's the alignment? I, I, I got mine aligned. What do you want to do? So now here we go. Okay, all you guys out there that have your great alignment specs and stuff, I'm going to step out over that thin limb and I'm going to tell you what our alignments are, but I'm going to tell you why. That's the thing that nobody ever talks about is why do you do that? All right? <clears throat> All right. In alignment. Now, I've been in this business 24 years, and one of the first parts I bought was a Computer Hunter six-wheel alignment machine. 
The first one ever made by Hunter. It was expensive. It had to be aligned every 90 days, and you don't know that it wasn't aligned until the alignment doesn't work. It's one of the first ones out there. I learned a lot about alignment. And you can leave Elgonza, it's all right. You gonna go to your sofa? Yeah, yeah, she's on the sofa now. <clears throat> but that running that alignment machine until Hunter wouldn't, wouldn't uh, fix it anymore taught me a lot about the alignments on these motorhomes, okay? So here's what I know, okay? What other people know is what they know. And it's good that we live in America because we don't have to get arms against each other, okay? But here's what I found that works on an alignment. From having a six-wheel alignment machine, I don't need a six-wheel alignment machine, okay? You don't need to search the world for some place that has a six-wheel alignment machine, all right? Rear suspension. Go to the back of your coach, bring it up, and look at it. Look at the back wheels. <clears throat> do they look like this? Hmm. Do they look like this? What's, what do they look like? Okay. What I mean is, <clears throat> if you can visually see a problem, then there's a problem. But if you can't visually see it, there's not a problem. How do I know that? Because after 15 years of running that stupid alignment machine, I found out that if I looked at it, and I went through all that shit to hook up the alignment machine, it was fine. Okay? So, we don't do it anymore. The machine broke. They wouldn't fix it anymore. Gone. <clears throat> Go to the back of the coach and look at the two wheels. And if they look pretty good, if they look straight. Now, you got to be honest. If they're like this, they're cambered in like this, you got a problem. And that has to do with the shims and all this, but that does not happen very often, okay? Next thing on the rear, take a really nice eight foot two by four that's nice and straight. Lay it on the wheel, put it right on the front of the rim, put one edge on the, on the front of the rim and it goes out, say the rear wheel, have it go out toward the back. Is that two by four straight to the body? Is it? Probably good. You put it on there and it, it and it's not level to the body. Well, we're going to have to back up a little bit. Might be a little bit more work because we're going to have to bend the bogey arms. Just like a Ford F-150 has those, uh, those big arms like this. You do a line on that, <laughs> use a hammer, bang, you beat it. You bend those arms on that Ford in place. It's the same thing that you do on this GMC. The rear arms have to be aligned. And if that's the case, it does happen after 45 years, true. Uh, there's a procedure to do that, and I can, I can do another video on that. But honestly, if the pins are good, now we just finished the job, we had to put pins. If the back arms are, are loose, well, look, man, it's 45 years, you're going to have to do something. It's going to be a little bit of work to get the back in the line, but you can visually get it aligned. You follow what I mean? Alignment is a visual alignment on the rear end. All right, let's say we do that. You look at it, it looks straight. Put the two by four on it, and they look straight. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna set it to right height. You can get your book out and check that, but the way to set it on right height, you have gotta get it set on right height before you do the alignment. Now, the front end. If you go to the manual, they've got two little marks on the uh, frame that you put a stick on, you know, and all this. Well, <laughs> the frame doesn't care where it is. What that's doing that stick on the front, when it's at the proper ride height, the drive shaft is coming straight out of the differential and goes straight into the, the knuckle. Drive shaft is parallel. If that stick goes to here, the drive shaft is parallel. So why don't we not worry about the, the stick and just look up under there. Is the drive shaft parallel, truly parallel? If it is, booyah, front end's good. If it's off, you're gonna have to adjust the, uh, the uh, front uh, torsion bars. And that's not a big deal, but uh, you, know, it's, you, do, you relieve the pressure on the bolt to move the bolt, but let's say that's good, okay? Because that's getting ready for the alignment, okay? So let's just say that's good. So 
The back end is good. The front end is at proper ride height. The drive shafts are coming straight out. And the back wheels are an inch and a half to two inches lower. If you stand next to the, the, your body side molding and measure it on your waist, and then go right at, the, right at the front wheel, right? Right at front wheel. Measure from the ground to the side of your body side molding. And then go walk to the back. Stand between the two middle wheels and mark where your body side molding is. Body side molding on the back should be an inch and a half to two inches lower. The front, say the front is 30 inches. I, I, I don't even know what number it is. Say it's 30, the back is gonna be uh, 27 and a half or something like that okay that's proper ride height now you can do an alignment you got to set it up for the alignment you got to get ready there's no reason to do the alignment if you're not, not at proper ride height because then when you change the ride height with your air ride system your alignment's going to be off so you've got to set your ride height you got to be sure that the uh, the back wheels are straight because what we're going after is to align the front wheels. We're going after what's called a thrust alignment. Thrust alignment has to do with the front wheels and it's assuming the back is straight. Because you know, on a, on, a, uh, on a rear wheel drive car, there's not a whole lot you can do on alignment on the rear wheels, right? So on that kind of situation, on that chassis, they just do a, what's called a thrust alignment. It's a front wheel alignment. Well, we'll have the back in, in good shape. So all we need is a thrust alignment on the front two wheels. We get all this stuff ready to go. All right, <clears throat> specifications. Here we go, guys. <clears throat> I'm gonna be making somebody mad on this, all right? First thing you do is camber. Camber, when you look at the wheel, is like this. On the side, if, if, if you're looking at the back of the coach, uh, uh, camber would be like this. You have positive, negative, okay, on the front wheels. There's all kinds of specifications for all kinds of cars, okay? I'm telling you about a GMC motorhome. I don't even work on my wife's truck. Wouldn't touch it. I only work on one thing. I'm a one-trick pony. Camber on our GMC motorhome should be zero, zero, straight up. None of this. None of that. You do this, it's like you're, stuff, you're, you're standing on top of a basketball trying to balance. You're doing this you're kind of plowing the road and you're going to wear your tires out. Your tires need to be camber, needs to be straight up. Okay. All right. Next specification is toe, not your toes, the toe of the tire. Toe is like this. Okay. Toed in, toed out. Now, standard operating procedure for an alignment guy on a front wheel drive car is to tow it out just a little bit because their theory is when it torques, they pull in, okay? Well, if you do that with your GMC, you're gonna be all over the road. You won't know where the middle is. You're gonna be going all back and forth because you need to be zero, zero on your toe, straight ahead. Our suspension is strong enough that it does not pull in when it torques. It's straight. So your toe needs to be straight. Zero, zero on camber. Zero, zero on toe. Third one, caster. What's caster? All right. <clears throat> I talked a little bit about this on the uh, ride height. But on a bicycle front wheel, the fork is bent and the wheel is up here with the bearing and the pivot is the handlebar is up here, right? Well, with the wheel in front of the pivot, that's called positive caster. It's kind of like a, uh, a chopper motorcycle, easy rider. They're sleeping on the motorcycle driving straight ahead on the highway. Well, you can do that if the wheel's out there far enough, <laughs> but he'd have to turn, he'd have to park in a, in a parking lot to turn the thing because the wheel's too far out. So positive caster gives you straight ahead on your alignment, okay? All right, likewise, negative caster. In other words, it's here's your pivot and the wheel's back here. That's like a shopping cart front wheel. You're going around the, the aisles in a shopping and it's it turns real easy, doesn't it? Okay, 
because the wheel's back here and that's a negative caster. But if you took that shopping cart and let it go in the parking lot, you don't know where it's going to go because the negative caster vehicle goes all over the place. You don't want negative caster. You want as much positive caster as you can get because you're driving on the highway. Okay? We want to have superior handling capability on the highway or in town. Your rear suspension does that. Caster does that. The more caster you have, the lighter your wheel. The less caster you have, the heavier the wheel and the harder it is to handle it. Okay? All right. So if we know this, <clears throat> here's the frame of the motorhome. My hand's not straight. Here's the frame of the motorhome, the bottom of the frame. And here's a caster that GM built into your steering wheel on your front wheel, so it turns. Okay, so it's, it's a light wheel, all right? So let's take your adjustable air ride and drop the back. Caster rolls forward. See, it's right here. Let's take the front, let's take the, the suspension and go up. Caster rolls negative. See? Okay? So in town, when you jack it up, it'll turn tight in town. On the highway, it's four factor two, Scotty. The lower you drop the back until you throw sparks, the better straight ahead you'll have. And that's from the caster. So how do we set caster? Okay. After the camber is set, after the toe is set, now you set the caster. You go to the passenger wheel because after 45 years, I'll guarantee you somebody hit a pothole or a curb with your right wheel. Nine times out of 10, your frame is bent. Okay, just a little, but it's enough that when you do alignments, it'll make a difference. So you go to the passenger wheel first and you set your alignment as close as you can to two to two and a half degrees, somewhere in there, okay? Lock that down. Then go to the driver's side and get the same. Whatever caster you have here, you have to have here to have it go straight. So if you got two and a half degrees here, chances are on the right hand, on the driver's side, you'll get two and a half degrees. But if you set two and a half degrees on the driver's side, and the passenger side was hammered, you may not be able to get two and a half degrees, okay? That's why when we, uh, when we change control arm bushings, we put offset bushings so we can roll it back and get more caster. But let's say we're working with good, you have good bushings, no reason to change bushings. You wanna set the caster to two to two and a half degrees on the passenger side, and then set two to two and a half degrees to match this on the driver's side, okay? <clears throat> You're done. <laughs> no black hole. If you have two to two and a half degrees of caster, and if you have zero camber, zero toe, and the back is zero camber and zero toe also, you're going to go straight. You're just going to go straight. Uh, steering wheel. If the steering wheel is not straight, there, we did a video about this about the steering shaft. If you'll go back and find it, maybe, you know, uh, binge watch and find it. But the steering shaft has adjustments. There's four adjustments on the spline. I mean, on the uh, four, four piece spline, there's six adjustments on the head. So that'll get your steering wheel straight. <coughs> uh, you want to get the gear gearbox straight, of course, but these are the basic specifications that you'll need to do an alignment. Now, no reason to come to me to do it. Okay. Any good truck stop can do a thrust alignment on your coach. So if you do some checkouts first of what's your back end look like, what's your right height, is your, are your drive shafts going out straight, a thrust alignment will put you on the road and running really, really good. All right. Um, if you would like, uh, find a truck stop that will do it, uh, give me a call. I'll talk to them. Take me 10 minutes, I tell them everything to do, I'm free. You're a ranch hand, that's one of the perks, okay? Um, <coughs> alignment does not have to be a black hole. If some guy's sitting there telling you that it's real special and somebody's is grown in Lithuania somewhere only twice a year and there's some special thing you gotta put on without that, it won't work, 
They're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. A bone stock, now we do a quad bag because it's safer, but a bone stock GMC, bone stock, will go down the highway at 70 miles an hour with two fingers on the wheel if the alignment is done right. Guarantee you. Okay? If yours doesn't, call me. Let's get it straight. All right, guys, well, look, we've run this a little bit long. Next time we're going to have some more pictures hanging here. It'll look a little better. Um, Maybe Eleganza won't go to sleep on us, and um, we'll do another one. Thanks uh, for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.